it's Shell from Scrap Secrets and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be making this card using some Honey Bee and Kindred Stamps products. So first we're gonna start out with the Pineapple Lattice Layering Stencils. It's a set of two stencils. These are from Honey Bee and we're gonna be using Distress Oxide. So the first thing that I did was I used Pixie Spray on the back of my stencil and I'm using some squeezed lemonade Distress Oxide to do this layer. Now, you will see me use this layer again because when I go back in with the second one and use Mustard Seed, which is a darker shade of Distress Oxide, it overtakes the Squeeze Lemonade because I did it wrong. You should do the lightest color in the largest openings if you want a big variation between the two of them. If you want certain areas to just be a little bit more highlighted, you can do the light color first like I did, but I wanted a greater variation. And you'll see in the, after I ink up the second stencil, you'll see the difference between doing that and then when I do the, do the stencil, first stencil again a second time. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing and I'll show you what I mean. So this is where I go in with the mustard seed. I put the stencil down in the correct placement there are etching lines on this, so it does help with the placement of the stencil. And you can see there, I realize it just looks like mustard seed and there's a couple of spots that are a little bit darker than the others because the mustard seed is going over top of the squeezed lemonade. It overtakes it. So I'm actually going to, once I take this off and I realize that, I'm gonna go back in with the first stencil and use some fossilized amber to ink it up. So I'm gonna do the first stencil all over again and you'll be able to notice a big difference. See how you can kind of, it all looks kind of the same shade. Wait till you see after I do a stencil the third time. So while I'm doing that, cause I'm not doing anything special, it's just re-inking the whole thing. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how you can mix and match from different companies. So in this case, I took the pineapple theme that was in the card and knew I wanted a pineapple background. So I went through my stencils and found these pineapple stencils. They're a little bit more abstract. It's called pineapple lattice, so it's not straight up pineapples. Um, but I wanted that to be the background instead of doing an underwater scene like I could have done, I wanted to do something that was mixing and matching from companies, so I used the pineapple theme to tie everything together. So that's one of the things you want to do when you're looking for ways to mix and match companies. You're going to want to look for a common theme that ties them together, whether it be similar, so if, if you're going to go by theme, so which is what I did in here. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Oh, this is from the, I believe it was the Underwater Buddies box from Kindred Stamps, which I don't believe is available anymore. Pretty much everything they do is limited edition. I stamped it out onto a very light piece of cardstock. I believe this was 65 pound or maybe lighter than that. Put it to the side to dry and you'll see I have to make an adjustment to that in a, in a couple minutes. So I did make a lot of mistakes in this card, um, but I left them in so that you guys could see and hopefully learn from my mistakes, kind of do as I say, not as I do. One of my favorite things, uh, or one of my favorite ways to dress up some of the die cuts is to use another medium to draw shadows and bring highlights out in them. So you'll see here, I'm taking that Y18 and going over the stitched lines in the pineapple, some in the door, and coloring in that window that's gonna go on top of the pineapple. You can use Copic markers, inks, colored pencils. There's so many different paints, so many different mediums you can use to add highlights for dimension, and it just helps step that die cut up. Just give it a little bit more of a 3D look. Um, you'll see here that I accidentally got some black ink on the door and I'm using my mono sand eraser just to try to get rid of it. So that's all that was. But I am also going to go in with some Distress Oxide that was just left on my brush, and I believe this is Mustard Seed, and go around the edges a little bit. It gives it a little bit of shading on the outside and it makes it look a little bit more round. So there's just tips like that that you can do to step up your die cut images. 
If you guys are interested in seeing a series like that, I did the background already and then here I'm telling you a little bit about die cuts. If you wanna do a series like that, if you want me to do a series like that, let me know in the comments because I love doing things stepped up. You know, me, especially if you are a new card maker, sometimes it's hard to, when you, you look at other cards and you're like, wow, how did they do that? There's tips and tricks out there on ways to make your die cut just going from I cut it out and I glued it together to a couple more steps to make it look 3D or to step it up. So if there's anything, if that's a series that you guys would be interested in, let me know below in the comments. So now I'm going to get ready to put the pineapple together. I'm using my Honey Bee Bee Creative Glue on the back of these pieces to glue everything down onto the card. Oh, when I was going through my supplies of things I wanted to use, I saw this pineapple die and I saw the stamp set and I'm like, this is really cute. What can I do for the background? So usually if you were doing like a scene straight out of the cartoon, you would do an underwater scene. But I wanted, like I said before, wanted to tie it all together with the pineapple theme. So the first thing that I do when I'm trying to figure out what to go, what goes together is how can I use this a little bit differently? How can I take something from another company and make it work? Theme is one really great one. So like this with the pineapple. Uh, another way that I like to use things is scale. There's a lot of companies that have small images. So say for example, Santa hats that can be placed on small characters. There are things that you can put in characters' hands. You can even use images that are different sizes to give perspective. So the larger image would go in the front and the smaller image would go in the back and it would naturally give it a some depth perception to look like they were meant to be in the scene together. So there's all kinds of things that you can do with mixing and matching companies and I think I'm going to start a series on that too. Um, maybe not super regularly but maybe every once in a while is just showing you guys how to mix and match from different stamp companies. So back to the card now, um, you'll see that I had stamped out two images on that very thin paper and even though I heat set it and I let the ink dry for a little while, it was not working. Uh, it was smudging that ink and it shouldn't, so paper really matters when you are stamping your images out. This is the 110 pound cardstock and you can see I heat set this one as well, but that ink did not move even when I got the light colors close to it. I tried to keep my markers away from the black lines even though it was dry because sometimes it still may smudge a little bit. Um, and also I had just re-inked my ink pad so it was pretty juicy and that could have been the reason why. It just that ink didn't, there was too much ink and it probably didn't soak into that really thin paper. Because I've never really seen a colored pencil smudge it either. So you see I used uh, the Copic markers, then I tried colored pencils, and then I just said forget it and restamp the image. So I'm using the yellows and blues to color in his bathing suit bottom, and then I'm going to be using some RVs to color him in. I'm also going to be going back in with some colored pencils to add a little bit of texture as well as shine to him. If you guys have watched this cartoon at all, you know he's a little bit shiny when uh, it comes to seeing him on screen. And I just thought a little bit of colored pencil on top would go better. So again, this is another way you can step up your images, your die cuts, things like that, is to go color them in with Copic markers, but then add colored pencil over top of it. I find that at least for myself, I can get a little bit better texture with using the colored pencils. Yes, I do need to sharpen my colored pencils, but I didn't have a pencil sharpener down in my office. So I wanted to just get this card done. It was late at night and I had had, as you saw, lots of what Bob Ross would call happy accidents. So I was just like, let's just get this card done so I can go to bed because I felt like I couldn't go to bed without finishing this card. I wanted to just get it done. Um, and also if you saw me going back to the background when it was done and putting the pineapple on it, I realized that I probably should have done the, uh, the panel in a vertical, not horizontal fashion because now it looks like the pineapples are on their side, which is fine because it's not 
typically, it's not pineapple shaped. It's a pineapple lattice. So it's not like you see the pineapples and now they're all laying on their side. So again, another happy accident. I think it turned out fine. Now I'm using that same Honeybee Be Creative glue. Behind that pineapple, being careful to not get glue in any of those open areas. Uh, you could put some black cardstock behind it if you wanted um, black to be on there, or you could do a darker yellow to incorporate the um, the you know the the highlights that we did. So there's a couple different things. Again, another way you could step it up and give it a little bit more dimension by doing that. I glued the pineapple towards the right of the card front um, because I wanted to make sure the character had enough room. And then I also wanted to, I was trying to figure out what to do with the sentiment. I didn't know if I wanted to come in with a banner, but nothing looked right to me. So I actually cut my stamp and I know some of you guys are going to be freaking out about that, but it's totally fine. It goes back together. It works. You can make it work in a line. I'm using some VersaFine Onyx Black ink to stamp that in. I'm going to let it dry for a minute because that's pigment ink. While it's drying, I cut out a top folding A2 size card base, and then I'm going to use my ATG to glue that down. So that's the entire card. I hope that you've gotten some tips and tricks on how to incorporate images and uh, products from different companies together in one cohesive card. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have comments or questions, please feel free to leave them below, and I'll see you again for another video. Bye!